Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop. The question I have today is, do these filters, light pollution filters, actually work? Well, I'm going to put that to the test. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Well, welcome to my channel. I do a lot of astrophotography from my own backyard, and I call it the Heavenly Backyard Garden, and hence Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Now, today, or tonight, I want to uh, do a test with some of these light pollution filters. All right, I do have several filters to uh, work with. First of all, in the broadband, I have a UV IR cut filter. Well, you know, this is a standard filter. It should be used just about at all times if you're not using any other filters. Um, here you have the ultra high contrast UHC filter. This helps bring out the nebulosity in low, low light polluted skies. And then in the narrow band, I have a couple as well. I have the Altair Astral Quad Band Filter. Uh, this filter uh, is great for one-shot color cameras and it filters out a lot of the light pollution. Then there's the Optolong L Enhance Filter that I'll be using. The camera that I used is the uh, ASI 071, the ZWO, uh, and um, it is a multicolor camera and on this camera I have a filter drawer and I just simply take out the filter right here. For example, this is the uh, Opt Optolong uh, L Enhanced filter and it just simply slides in very simple like that. And I'm able to easily change the filters. Now what I did is on the test elements I, I shot one hour on, a, on the target for each different filter. Now the target that I used was Sharpless 188. That's also known as the Shrimp Nebula. Uh, one thing about this nebula, it's not very bright. It's a rather dim nebula up in the constellation Cassiopeia. And up in the sky there, it doesn't shine all that bright. Uh, however, it does shine mostly in the red light or the hydrogen. Uh, a lot of hydrogen emission coming off from this uh, nebula. And uh, that is the test I'm using. Now, for the broadband, I took actually three different uh, tests. I took a absolutely no filter, and then the filter with the UV IR cut, and then the filter with the ultra high contrast filter. And uh, those I shot at Unity Gain uh, 139 on this camera, and also I shot it for one hour. I took um, five minute subs, 300 second subs. And so I took 12 of those and then used that. Now for the narrow band, the uh, Optolong uh, filter and the Altair Astro filter, I used the same settings basically except for the gain. I changed the gain from 139 to 250 because these filters are filtering out quite a bit of light. And I'm already going at uh, 300 seconds, so uh, my tracking isn't much better after that. So, you know, 300 seconds or five minutes, uh, I do a pretty good job uh, of tracking uh, so I don't get uh, any star blurring or star, star trailing at that. So uh, let's go into the test. All right, let's go into Stellarium and just look at where Sharpless 188 is or the Shrimp um, Nebula. And here you have uh, Cassiopeia right here and let's take a look at some of the other features of this area and uh, the different constellations. Uh, you have Cepheus, you have Andromeda right over here, Triangulum, Perseus, uh, Capella and Auriga right over the, uh, by the way the Flame Nebula is right over in here. Now what we have here is the base image and this is the image with absolutely no filters whatsoever and I took this through the Orion Eon 130 millimeter refractor telescope. And uh, as you can see, a, a lot of blue in the color as well. And there you can barely, barely see the nebulosity whatsoever associated with this uh, image. Uh, a lot of stars, but little nebulosity, and we're looking for the nebula. So yeah, you're gonna need some sort of filtering to get a good image, unless you're out in the darkest portion of the country. Uh, perhaps you can get away with no filters, but with this image here, uh, if you're looking for nebulosity, you need to have a filter. Now, if I was shooting galaxies, it might be a different story, but I'm not. I'm shooting nebulosity. Now, let's take a look at the next filter. This is going to be the UV IR cut filter. And there is the spectrum of light that it's allowing its 
uh, to pass through the filter. Here you have the actual color spectrum that we can see with our eyes from the purple and the blues, green, yellow, uh, orange, and then red. And then beyond this is the infrared, which we really can't see. And of course, beyond this side is the ultraviolet, which we can't see with our eyes. But anyway, uh, with this filter, this is allowing just about all of the visible light passing through, except for the ultraviolet over here and the infrared over here. And Believe it or not, that does make a difference. So let's take a look at the uh, image here. And there you can see it's a little bit better looking uh, than that first image. The first image with no filter at all. See a lot of blue in there uh, and very little nebulosity. Well, you're not getting much more nebulosity, but you're getting a little bit more. But the stars, well, they look better. Uh, so the UV IR cut does help a little bit. Okay, let's uh, put that away and we'll put this away and this away and go into the ultra high contrast filter. Now this filters in or filters out, in, depending what side of the curve you're looking at, uh, several different frequencies of light. So let's look at what it's actually seeing here. And this is allowing the red lights to pass through, which is a lot of the, the hydrogen alpha. Uh, a lot of the orange and yellows almost into the green light is also being passed through. Uh, that is where a lot of light pollution it does exist. But also it, it has a tendency, if you have really dark skies and very low light pollution, uh, this will enhance the nebulosity. Uh, over here, the uh, yellows to the green, uh, that's a lot of light pollution and even moon glow from that. And then you get into the darker greens, into the blues and the purples. And that's, uh, again, where you have a lot of the O3 or the oxygen-3 uh, emission coming off or reflections in many different cases. So let's take a look at the image itself, the ultra-high contrast image. And that, well, yeah, that you can almost see what looks like a shrimp now uh, showing up. Uh, the stars, I got a little bit of a halo effect on some of those brighter stars, but you know, compare that uh, with, first of all, the uh, uh, no filter whatsoever and then the uh, UV IR cut filter. Yeah, you can see quite a bit of difference already uh, with the ultra high contrast. Now, I'm, I'm in a Bortle 4.5 area. Uh, so I'm, you know, I, I can see the Milky Way uh, in the summertime, particularly um, barely, but I can see it from my backyard. Uh, if you're in a Bortle you know, a 6, 7, or 8, you know, uh, this might not work. It might just be too bright of a sky. Uh, but if you're in a Bortle zone uh, less than four, uh, this ultra-high contrast filter will probably do a pretty good job uh, for your, your uh, observations. All right, that's the uh, broad band. Let's go into the narrow band. And the first one that I have is the Altair Astro Quad Band. And um, uh, this shows um, the light that's being allowed to pass through or the light that's being filtered out. And um, once again, if you look at it, um, the blues and the greens, actually the, the darker greens into the blues and the darker blues are being passed through. That's equivalent to the oxygen-3 filters and uh, even a little bit over here, the H-beta. Uh, but anyway, over here in the reds, uh, it's allowing a lot of the reds to pass through, and that's equivalent to the hydrogen alpha. And a lot of the emission nebulae uh, is in the red area. So this is what a lot of the nebula uh, is looking at, you're seeing uh, from that. And if you have blue in the nebula, uh, it's, it's over from this area of the spectrum. And notice the middle, uh, this uh, from the orange through the yellow and the greens uh, into the mid greens anyway, is being filtered out mostly. And uh, that is where a lot of the light pollution uh, does exist. So uh, let's uh, uh, quit with the chit chat and take a look at the picture itself. And here's the picture. And there you can see from the uh, Altair Astro uh, quad band, it did a pretty good job. I mean, the stars look good um, and the, uh, the nebulosity is coming out even more uh, compared to the uh, Altair high contrast UHC filter. Uh, you can see there is a bit of a difference there. And uh, you know, if I had to choose between the two, you know, I'd go with the uh, quad band on this one here. Now, also, if you're in a higher light pollution area, this will also help more than the uh, uh, UHC filter because it is, it's filtering out a lot of that light pollution that's being passed through in the um, UHA, uh, ultra high contrast filter, UHC. And uh, so 
enough with that. Let's take a look at the Optolong uh, L Enhance filter. Now, this is the filter here, the uh, spec specs from the uh, their company, and I put in the colors here. So it's 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 only allowing a very narrow area of reds to pass through the filter, and uh, is blocking everything else out here in the middle. And uh, then it's allowing that uh, medium to dark green into the blues to the dark blues to pass through. And even a little bit of the H beta on the very end here, which is a bluer color um, to uh, pass on through. So you're getting um, a lot of filterization going on out here. Nothing to the right, of course, with the infrared and nothing to the left in the ultraviolet. But you're also not getting anything in the uh, from the... Um, a bright orange through the yellows to the greens to the medium to almost dark greens is being filtered out. So the picture here comes to look like this. And there is a much better looking picture. Uh, that's a good looking picture. And you can actually see um, what looks like a shrimp now. Again, this is only a one hour exposure. You can also see a little bit of the nebulosity off to the right over here, uh, which is part of this planetary uh, nebula. Uh, it, it, you know, it is um, expanding outward in a circular or spherical fashion. Uh, what I read, the star that is producing this uh, um, nebulosity is moving in this direction here uh, uh, into this brighter area, producing the um, higher nebulosity on the lower left side. You know, uh, looking at that Altair Astro too, you can also see a little bit of the nebulosity over here. And I suppose if I get you know put it two or three hours or more on this, you would get a lot more of this red showing up over here. But for the testing purposes, uh, I wanted to uh, just give them all the same time exposure at a one hour a piece. So uh, uh, that's what that you, this one doesn't want to play games. Okay, let's move over there. All right. So uh, one other thing I wanted to show you, while I had the Optolong L Enhanced filter on the telescope, the next night was surprisingly clear that weatherman had the forecast wrong. He was forecasting or cloudy weather conditions and it was clear for like six hours. So I opened up the telescope and I took a picture of this. <laughs> wow, this is the Flaming Star debut. I believe this is a three hour exposure. And again, I used the um, the uh, Optolong L Enhanced filter and uh, 300 seconds or five minute exposures. And I had uh, something like uh, 36, maybe 40, it might, might be a four hour exposure. But anyway, you can see a tremendous amount of uh, hydrogen uh, over in here with the red emission. And then you can also see some of the blues and the purples showing up over here. Now this is the star that's producing this um, glowing uh, uh, nebula here, the radiation coming in off this star is exciting these hydrogen atoms to give off the red light. And from what I heard uh, and learned is that uh, this star uh, in Cepheus once was part of the trapezium uh, stars in the uh, Orion Nebula. And this star got bumped somehow and was ejected outward and is moving in this direction. And you can see the shock waves uh, being generated by the motion of this runaway star. And then another uh, picture I took the same night uh, programming the NINA software uh, to grab it was the Horsehead Nebula. And uh, again, you, a lot of blues here and the blue stars, but I'm also getting some halo effect, a big halo effect on this um, one of the stars of the belt uh, of Orion. But notice the uh, uh, the red luminosity coming in from the hydrogen uh, uh, reflex or emission rather uh, in this horsehead nebula. We can zoom in on that a little bit. Look how smooth that is too. Um, nice clean nebulosity. Uh, I got here in a Bortle 4.5 zone here uh, for the horsehead nebula. Now, if you ever look at the horsehead nebula for the first time, you, you might look in your telescope and you say. Where is it? I don't see it anywhere. It is very dim. Uh, but uh, uh, with the longer exposures and with the right filters, yeah, it comes out. You can get a really, really great image. And not only the Horsehead Nebula, but you know, a lot of the nebulas, uh, particularly those that are emitting the hydrogen light, which is red, and those that are reflecting in from the oxygen, uh, those are in the bluer lights. And even the H beta is even a darker blue color from that. But anyway, uh, yeah, I, I think these filters are doing the job.
So these filters do seem to work, particularly the, the narrow band filters on a one shot color camera. And you know, if I want to, I can also split these from the red uh, into the uh, green and blue. And I can use the red for the hydrogen alpha and then a combination of the green and blue uh, for the oxygen three. I can also produce a Hubble palette out of that uh, for my color scheme uh, of uh, uh, SHO, sulfur, hydrogen, oxygen. So, you know, it, it, this does open the door for uh, narrow band uh, astrophotography using the one shot color cameras. Now, it's still, it's going to be hard to beat the monochrome cam cameras using the individual filters for the hi hydrogen oxygen and the sulfur. But if you don't have a monochrome camera and you do have a good one-shot color camera, even a DSLR, you can get these filters uh, for those uh, situations and split them in the certain different softwares that you use. Pixinsight, for example, easily splits them. I think you can also split it over in the uh, Photoshop. So anyway, uh, the filters do work and the Shrimp Nebula it's rather interesting looking, and being here in Savannah, Georgia, of course, we harvest shrimp right off the coast, so it makes it appropriate for this area as well. I'll just be a little plug for Savannah. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something out of the video. You know, I learn a lot from watching other people's videos, and uh, with that, uh, I like to uh, keep on top of what's going on in the astral photography world and through YouTube. Uh, it's amazing what's uh, available uh, and for the learning and it helps that learning curve uh, go a little bit faster anyway. Also, if you like this video, please hit the like button. That helps with that algorithm uh, that YouTube uses, whatever that algorithm is. It does help and it makes this video and all my videos and all the other videos that you watch uh, more available to the YouTube community, which is millions of people. So you know, remember, the, the heavens are filled with majestic glories. I just showed you several of them. Uh, the Shrimp Nebula, the Horsehead Nebula, that Flaming Star Nebula. Anyway, they're all up in a sky near you. So get out and look, and unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.